Okay, we have Coach Izzo on his way. He'll be here in just a few minutes. Uh, a couple things as we get ready for Coach Izzo and, and today's press conferences. Uh, first of all, as a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and the student athletes, please silence your cell phones during the press conferences. Uh, when asking questions, we would ask that you give your name and your media affiliation ahead of asking your question. We have two microphone holders on each side. We will please raise your hand. We will get a microphone over to you. I will call you, call on you, and then give your name and affiliation, and we'll uh, get the question going. If you are joining on Zoom and you have a question, uh, use the raise hand function. Um, we will eventually get to the Zoom questions as well. Uh, again, recording of press conferences, cell phone cameras, anything like that is prohibited per NCAA regulations. We have Coach Izzo up on the podium. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach and then we'll open it up to questions. So Coach, welcome. Welcome to New York, world's most famous arena. Great to have you. Uh, wow, little advertising, huh? I like that. Um, yeah, what a privilege it is uh, to, well, first of all, it's great to be in a Sweet 16, but to have it in New York, Madison Square Garden, where, you know, we all know is the mecca of basketball, not college, pro, anything. And uh, so it's been a big thrill for us. Uh, we know that uh, we're going to play a good team in Kansas State. Uh, it's been an incredible journey, especially this last uh, month and a half, and yet we're playing some of our better basketball. We've kind of alternated between our offense and our defense, and sooner or later I'd like to put the two together. If we could ever have both working at the same time, I think um, you know we would be a even a better team. And yet, uh, last week in our defense kind of carried us, which a lot of times is needed in the NCAA tournament. So excited to be here, uh, proud of my team and what they've accomplished so far and yet uh, have great respect for Jerome and what he's done at Kansas State and their basketball team. Okay, once again, if you have a question for Coach Izzo, just raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone over to you uh, and have you ready to go. We'll start here to my right in the middle, second row. Thank you. Uh, Brennan Shabath from WDBM Sports. Tom, you mentioned getting the offense and defense working together. I'm wondering if there's one or two players maybe who you think can really orchestrate that and be the catalyst for that to happen in a game. Well, I don't think there's any question. It's AJ. I mean, uh, you know, your quarterback has to orchestrate, uh, and he's done a much better job. I think last game we didn't shoot the ball really well, and uh, I thought we had some decent shots. We just missed some shots. But, uh, you know, over a uh, conference season, we were a team that shot almost 40% from the three. So um, I, I, the sample size of two games, I don't think it's in anybody's head. We just didn't shoot it as well in those two games. And I think we'll uh, shoot a bit if we get our running game going. I think that'll help. I think this game will be up and down. I think they want to run, we want to run. And uh, yet at the end of the day, you know, you got to make shots no matter who you are. And uh, that helps you win. At the end of the day, though, the other thing that helps you is your defense travels. And uh, over the years, it's, it's helped me a lot. We'll stay in the middle uh, on the other side of the aisle. Yep, in the back there. Go ahead, raise your hand real quick just so we can see you. Go ahead. Hi, Sean Windsor, Detroit Free Press. Tom, you, you've had some awfully good guards over the years, but have you, can you recall a time when you've had three guards that played both ends of the floor like these three guys do? You know, it's been a while. I mean, I guess back in the day with Mateen and Charlie, and if you call Morris a guard, but he probably wasn't a guard, so you're probably right. But we got him to guard people, and we had two defenders that were off the charts. And at times now, we have three guys that can really guard the ball. And uh, and yet, as you said, now that Jaden is starting to shoot it better, and AJ's shooting it better and, and distributing it better, I. I think I'd have to agree. I thought the best one I had maybe it was a Gary Harris. You know, he could guard you on one end and score it on the other. But I got three guys that, um, and Tyson's, you know, can't be fooled by his size, just like <laughs> they got a guard, you can't be fooled by his size either. But uh, Tyson's a very good defender, probably doesn't get as much credit as he did at Northeastern, where he was Defensive Player of the Year, because he is a very good defender. And we'll stay in the middle again, back on the other side of the aisle, 
uh, here in the third row. Coach Izzo, Rob Collins from Fox 4 in Kansas City. You mentioned uh, what Coach Tang has done in your opening statement. Just can you elaborate on that? He started with two players and then to get to where they are. Well, he's, he's used the transfer portal well, and uh, it's worked pretty well for him. And I, I think the other thing, though, is you look at him, and, and this is taking nothing away from him, but he is an experienced, non-experienced head coach. <clears throat> Uh, I, I spent 12 or 13 years with Judd Heathcote, and that really helped prepare me. I remember Judd saying one time, would you rather take a smaller job and just so you can say you're the head coach, or would you rather prepare for Indiana and Michigan and Purdue every day, you know? And, and I think that helped me. I think Scott Drew really, really helped Jerome, you know? Uh, they built that program. Uh, they built it together, just like I built mine with my assistants over the years. Um, if you watch them, I think he was given a lot of uh, uh, power, uh, just like I was at the end. You know, I think Scott had a lot of faith in Jerome, and uh, so he had more than just suggestive power that sometimes assistants have. So I think he was, uh, you know, Roy Williams was born to take over a bigger job you know some people leave early and uh work their way up through the ranks i think bill self did some people stay like i did or jerome did and uh prepare yourself that way i i think uh he deserves a lot of credit i think scott drew deserves a lot of credit and i think it it shows that uh we need our assistants you know assistants are more valuable than we than sometimes any of us give them and, uh, and I think he did a lot for that Baylor program, and that's why they had the success they had. And Scott allowed him to and helped prepare him to be a head coach, and so I'm sure he's very grateful of that, too. We'll go right down here in front of me. Go ahead. Al Fruso with the Associated Press, Tom. Talking about Tyson, there's so much kind of lore about these New York City point guards. Is there something that distinguishes New York City kids? Is there an attitude? Is there something about them that is um, notable? Well, you know, he's not from the heart of the city, but uh, he is. He does have that that swagger about him. Uh, you know, his is a little more. Uh, I think sometimes the New York swagger is a very cocky swagger, and sometimes that's good. You got to be. He's kind of had the happy medium, you know, he's got enough cockiness to be confident, and yet he's an unbelievable kid, you know, and at his size, I mean, he, he, he wants to guard you, but he also wants to take big shots. I mean, he's the best two-way player I've had probably since Gary, you know, where he can uh, do it on both ends, and that's so valuable to a team, and, and so good to be able to tell other scorers that he can get you 30 at, on some nights, and he can shut down the other players. So I don't know if it is New York City. Unfortunately, I don't recruit enough out here, but uh, Tyson would, would definitely give me a lot of reasons. He's been an unbelievable kid. Um, you know, I, I think he was humble. He, you know, he came from Northeastern. Uh, he's appreciative. He gave one of the all-time great speeches after we got beat by Duke on just how appreciative he was to be able to be on those kind of stages. And then this year, the stage is even bigger because it's Madison Square Garden, it's his home grounds, and it is the Sweet 16. So it's been fun to watch him grow, and uh, hopefully he'll play well. You know, I don't think he'll be nervous. Uh, he got me my pizza last night. I'm looking for the cab ride today. We'll stay on this side, a couple rows back. Uh, Hey, Tom. Roger Rubin from New York Newsday. Uh, as far as Walker, you know, being back in New York, uh, you know, has he communicated anything to you about a, a certain level of excitement with being here, a certain level of, uh, you know, people are going to come out to try to come see him? You know, has he, like, was, was New York something that was like a carrot dangled to him? <laughs> I just told him, no old girlfriends better show up around me. That's all I told him. But, uh, you know, he was excited. I mean, uh, you know, the, the joke about the pizza in the cab, I, I always tell my players, you, 
help us win the first game and I'll get you through to the second in the weekend because we've had some success on that over the years and in between games last weekend that's when I talked to him you know this is a privilege and an honor and it's um, it's something you should dream about when you were out shooting baskets outside you know uh, you know chance to play in Madison Square Garden which growing up in New York it's probably even bigger than it is growing up in the Midwest because um, you know what the garden is. I mean, I just like walking through the garden and seeing the pictures, you know, of all the great performers, <coughs> the great boxers like Muhammad, and the things that have gone on here are incredible. So he um, he was excited, you know. He's not a he's – he's kind of a reserved kid. Um, he gets excited. He, he gets angry sometimes, but he's a pretty reserved guy, and I just know it meant a lot to him. I know it meant a lot to his family. I mean – what a greater experience to, you know, play Duke in Mike's last game and then play against, uh, you know, Kansas State in his home ground and in arguably the greatest arena in the world. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool for him. We'll come to the other side over here. Yep. It's oh, next to you. There thanks. you go. <laughs> Graham Couch, Lansing State Journal. Tom, you haven't played these guys since your first two years and uh, home and home series, I think. Did, when, when, this, when you realized you were playing them, did, do you have any recollection of those two games and you think about where your program was at those moments when you played them around Christmas in those first two years? Yeah, I was mad at Judd. He scheduled those games. I, I think my first year I, I went to Kansas State, Oklahoma State. Uh, my schedule was, was off the charts because he got some home games at the end of his career that, and then I was stuck with the aftermath of that. But... Uh, you know, I remember going down there, and uh, you know, it was uh, it was a long time ago, though. And I I, I don't think it's going to have anything to do with tomorrow's game. Uh, I I just think that uh, I've been blessed to be in it long enough that I have memories like that. You know, I I can remember back to some of the teams we played and what we did. But as far as uh, anything that's going to benefit me or make me fearful. Um, not at all. And we'll stay on that side. Yep, go ahead. Hey, Tom. Adam Zagoria, New York Times. How you doing? Good, Adam. Um, both Tyson and Marquise Noel transferred up from low majors, mid majors, whatever you want to call them. Uh, what did you see in Tyson at Northeastern that made you think he could play at your level? And just what does it say about the college game in general now that these low major, mid major guys are moving up and making an impact? Well, it's, it's like everything else, you know, they've earned their keep. He played there a couple of years. He played for a very good coach, and uh, that was one of the things. And then when we got to know him and his family, I mean, he's a hell of a kid. He's a good student. He does the things the right way. Um, he hangs his hat on his defense. It's almost un-American and illegal now, uh, but he does it, and he's proud of it. And, uh, uh, and you just got to love a kid like that. But he works. Um, I, I – I, I think he's hungry too, you know, like I think some guys that are at this level all the time are transferring from this level. Um, there's, there's too much entitlement. He's not entitled. And uh, I absolutely love that about him. He wasn't entitled at all. And if you could have heard his speech after the Duke game, it was kind of about that. It was you know, I dreamed of playing in places like this, in games like this, against the competition. And uh, so he wasn't going to miss out on that opportunity, you know. And I think that I think that chip on your shoulder is really a good. I still got a chip on my shoulder uh, because of where I came from. And I think too many times those chips are taken off these kids when they're 10, 11, 12 years old, you know, when they're changing AU teams and high schools and junior highs and whatever else they do. Uh, he was, uh, he spoke highly of the place he's be he was at. Uh, he spoke well of the coach. Uh, you know, he just did all the things that I would appreciate anyway. And uh, I've been lucky to have him. And I, I, I think every once in a while, you know, when I'll say, hey, we're taking a bus trip to Chicago, you know, and normally you fly. I said, for me, as a Division Two guy, those bus trips were eight, nine hours. But I said, Ty, you you've taken a few of those too, right? And and we laugh about it, you know, if you haven't done it, if you've been so spoiled and entitled that you've never done that, you wouldn't appreciate it as much. He appreciates things, and I, I appreciate him for that. 
We're going to take one more question for Coach. We're going to go across the aisle, on the aisle. Christian Arnold, AM New York. Coach, you kind of touched upon it before, the specialness and the uniqueness of this place. What does this place mean to you, and do you try and press upon your players outside of, obviously, um, you know, Tyson, who knows the area, about what Madison Square Garden means to college basketball and, and being on the stage? Yeah, I, I, I've always impressed. You know, we played Kentucky here in the – in the uh, tournament of champions and we played Duke here, you know, I've set a lot of records here, you know, help Mike set his record for the most wins. Unfortunately, those records were at my, yeah, you know what I'm saying, Adam? Yeah. Expense. Good word. You know, I kind of a four letter word and under guy. So expense is a little more than that, but that's exactly right. It's, uh, you know, so, uh, but, there is the thrill of playing here. When you talk to, you know, for us, the Steve Smiths and Magic Johnsons, uh, you know, there's nothing like the Mecca, you know. There's nothing like Madison Square Garden. And so when we have the opportunity to play here, I always talk about it as a privilege. You know, we get to play in a lot of great places. But it's not just college basketball either, as you know. It's basketball, period. Doesn't matter what it is, this place is, is known for it. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying I've had a lot of great success here, so this will be a good weekend to change that. All right, Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right. See you tomorrow. Yep. Okay, we'll have Michigan State players up here in just a few minutes. Once again, a reminder uh, to please silence your cell phones during the press conferences. Uh, we do have satellite coordinates, if you have not already gotten them, for all press conferences throughout the weekend here in New York. Satellite coordinates are Galaxy 17, K10 slot A. Uh, downlink information is 11886.5. Once again, satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17, K10 slot A. Downlink is 11886.5. Okay, we have Michigan State players. We have senior forward Malik Hall, graduate forward Joey Hauser, junior guard A.J. Hogard, and senior guard Tyson Walker. Once again, uh, raise your hand. We'll have the microphone over to you. You can uh, please give your name and affiliation before asking your question and uh, direct your question to a specific player if possible. Uh, we'll start down here in front. Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Hey, Tyson, I know you've been asked a lot about coming back to New York and being from New York, so uh, I apologize for asking you again. There is sort of a myth and a lore to being a New York City point guard, yeah, you know, Bob Cousy to Sue Bird, right, Stephon Marbury. Was there any New York point guards that you sort of patterned your game after? Do you think being a New York guard gives you some, some kind of swagger? What's, uh, what is your position on the, uh, or what do you think of yourself in, in, um, in comparison to like the, the history of New York point guards? Um, I, I didn't model my game after anybody. You know, I just kind of just played. Uh, watched my brother growing up, so kind of play like him. Uh, you know, you do have a swagger, just diff <coughs> different type of swag uh, playing out here. You just got to be tough. Uh, got a different type of finesse with you. Okay, we'll stay in the front row on the other side, though. Here, Adam, go ahead. New York Times, you're going to get a lot of New York questions this week. Um, both you and Marquise, you know, transferred up from whatever you want to call it, mid-majors, low-majors. Coach was just in here saying um, he thinks guys who played at that level have more of an appreciation for this level and not as much of a sense of entitlement. I guess just what are your thoughts on kind of making that transition and how much do you appreciate, you know, being at this level after Northeastern? Uh, the transition, uh, it definitely started off rough. Uh, you know, beginning of the season last year, I was kind of struggling. Uh, and kind of figured it out as the season went on. And then now, you know, just getting back to my old self. Uh, you do have an appreciation for it, though. You know, just all the staff you got, uh, travel, 
Uh, it's all it's all different. Like doing this, it's all different than when you had me major. Uh, on the aisle here, go ahead. Matt Charbon of Detroit News. I'll ask AJ this one. Um, Tom was asked yesterday about again about the transfer portal and his decision to kind of stick with his guys. You know, not go get other guys and put the faith in you guys. Is that a two-way street for players when you see that that your coach and the staff has that faith in you? Does does that kind of create what you guys have become, having that faith in them and having that success now, the way they've done it? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Um, that just shows the confidence that coach had in us. Um, he's seen something in us from last year and uh, knew that the core guys coming back, uh, the veteranship that we had uh, could definitely do something special this year. And um, we're just trying to, you know, it's definitely a two-way street. Um, coach trusts us, we trust him. So we're just trying to go out there, give it our all, and uh, continue to make memories with each other. All right, we're going to go on the other side here with Roger. <laughs> Just raise your hand, Roger, so the guys can see you. Okay, go ahead. Roger Rubin <coughs> from New York Newsday. Uh, Tyshawn, the uh, can you tell us a little bit about like your your New York places that you'd like to go, that you liked to go, playgrounds that you like to play at, teams you like to play against, places you like to eat, things that you've told <laughs> your teammates about. I haven't told my teammates anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any favorites. I, I haven't really been home in like five years, so <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to go home to see my dog. That, that, that's about it. <laughs> Saint. Yeah. Same with this. All right, we're going to come into the middle here, we're going to come up to the front and then we'll go two rows behind there. So, Hello, my name is William uh, from Local Talk North Tyson. Uh, AJ or Joey or Malik, I uh, want to ask you this question. In reference to this tournament, the um, how do you guys feel about playing up in New York? Let's start with Malik and then we'll go to Joey. Um, I, I, I'd say I'm excited. Um, it's not my first time playing here. Uh, we play, I played here my freshman year um, and then a couple times over the last two years. So uh, something now I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to, something I'm excited about, uh, ready for the, for the atmosphere. It's going to be a, a fun game. Yeah, same thing. I mean, playing in the garden never gets old. Uh, I'm glad Tyson Walker gets to come back home and play. <laughs> we'll stay on the same side of the aisle, uh, two rows back. Go ahead. Joey, I'll, I'll direct this question to you. Christian Arnold with AM New York. I am curious, just obviously with the game being on this big of a stage and being in New York, how do you guys keep focused <laughs> over the next couple of days so that you don't get intimidated by uh, sort of the atmosphere and the stage that you're on? You know, we've played here before, um, so I think we're used to it, um, playing in this setting. But I think, honestly, you just want to soak up every moment and, and just live in the experience and, and enjoy it. I think that's the best way to go about it. And, um, you know, we've gotten here because of the way we play in our game. and. Um, we've elevated over the past couple of weeks, so we're just going to go out there and keep playing the same game, but definitely um, live in the moment and, and soak it all in. We're going to stay on this side of the aisle, but we're going to go to the outside. Go ahead, here in the middle. Zach Brazil in New York Post. Uh, Tyson, what did, Tyson, what did you remember you know, about playing in the Catholic League, and did you ever face Marquis Noel? Uh, yeah, we played a couple times, uh, sophomore and junior year. Uh, Catholic League is good. Uh, a lot of talented people. There's a lot of big names playing in that game. Uh, some in the pros. So uh, it's a good league. It still is a good league. Uh, not that's really. What it. What is it like to to now see a guy you played with against high school and now to be facing him on this stage? Uh, he, he's not the first one, uh, but it's definitely cool. Uh, because we played each other a lot of times. But just play on this stage, it's even better. Yeah, we'll go across the aisle uh, in the middle there. Go ahead. Just raise your hand so we can see it. Go ahead. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. AJ, um, talk a little bit about Tyson's development and how you two together have kind of worked the point and worked off the ball and the things that you do that make each other special. Uh, I think it starts with our friendship, you know. Um, that, that goes deeper than basketball. And uh, just a transition um, that he's made uh, 
from last year, starting off a little slow, um, the adjustment he made it coming in and playing Big Ten basketball. And, um, he's just back to his old self. Um, he's back to Northeastern Tyson. He's back to the Tyson I know him forever. And now uh, he's just more comfortable. And um, he got one job out there, make shots, score the ball. You know, I, I'll put everybody else in position to make shots. So uh, just him having that confidence in himself, the guys having the confidence in him, coach, um, it just shows. And uh, it's definitely something fun to be a part of. We'll stay on that side. We'll go deep in the corner. Go ahead. Hi, Saul Steinberg, Pix11. Uh, Tyson, I read a quote from you in high school. You were playing against St. Peter's, and you said the team had the will not to want to go home, and that's how you guys won the game. Do you guys feel the same way here now, that this team has the will not to want to go home? And that was six years ago. So <laughs> uh, uh, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, the season has flew by, so... Uh, we don't want this to be our last game. Uh, you know, you still want to have more practices. We we'll still want to be able to play another game. So just, just trying to put put some more good halves together. We're gonna stay on this side, down in the front row here. Go ahead. Just raise your hand so the guys can see you. Okay. Go yeah, ahead. Right down here, guys. Kellis Robinette from the Kansas City Star. I had a question for both Malik and Joey. Um, just what are your Initial impressions on Kansas State, and what stands out to you about the way they played in the first couple of rounds of the NCAA tournament? Let's start with Malik, and then we'll go to Joey. Um, first initial impressions, uh, just a really great team. Uh, they've had a, a heck of a year, um, played, played very hard, uh, won a lot of very big games, so definitely a very capable team. Um, I mean, I don't really know what else to say. Kind of, they're just a really good team. Yeah, I would say extremely talented. Um, they played in arguably the best conference in, in um, America this year, so they've seen it all. They've seen really good opponents, but uh, definitely really talented and, and um, got some really good playmakers. We'll come across the aisle. Do you have a question? Yep, on the aisle. Go ahead. Sean Woodward, the Detroit Free Press. Joey, you said last week you thought you guys had the best backcourt in the, the tournament. Tom was just saying earlier, he – we couldn't remember having three guards that played both ends in, in his career. I'm just curious for you to maybe expand on that a little bit, just what makes these, these trio so formidable? I mean, I would say, you know, AJ talked about it, friendship. Um, you know, it goes deeper in basketball. So they got a connection where they just, you know, they, they know where they are in the court. They know where each other are. Um, they make plays for each other. Um, Jaden as well. I mean, they all do it on both ends. They can score. They can defend. Um, they can they can make passes. They can make plays for other guys. So, um, you know, all their games are pretty complete. We'll go across the aisle here in the third row. Hey guys, Brennan Shabath from WDBM Sports. This question's for Malik and Joey. Um, third game in a row with a guard-heavy team, where they get a lot of their scoring from guards. Um, I'm wondering what you guys can do defensively, or what maybe responsibility you feel on defense to maybe lighten the load of A.J. Tyson and Jaden on defense, you know, playing against some of these, you know, the best scorers in the country? Start with Malik and then we'll go to Joey. Um, i just say kind of the same role as, as, as if it was switched. Um, Coach emphasizes help defense a lot. Um, it's something that, that we've been working on since my first day here at Michigan State. So really it's just making sure that everybody else is in the gaps, um, making sure that if we have to rotate, we're, we're able to help them out. Um, and you know, obviously grabbing rebounds and stuff like that, just so we don't have mul they don't get multiple shots, st things like that. We always talk about guarding your yard. Um, you gotta gotta be able to guard one on one defense. Um, you know, if there's a switch that occurs, you gotta be able to stay on your ground and just stick with a guy uh, for a possession or whatever it might be. But yeah, rebounding, limiting them to one one possession is important too, so they just get one shot. Stay on that same side on the outside. Go ahead. Just raise your hand so guys can see it. Go ahead. Five. Uh, there we are. Scott Reese, KCTV5. Um, Malik, this is for you. You spent three years Sunrise Christian in Kansas. I realize a different part of the state, but any experience with Kansas State? Did you ever go to a game? Did you have any thoughts about the, that program when you were there? Yeah, I had a um, I had a teammate who was committed to go there, eventually decommitted, but I, I went to a football game uh, not too long ago, and now one of my uh, Mokin assistant coaches coaches there right now. So. I know a little bit about the program and a little bit. Obviously, it's a different coach now than it was back then, but. We got time for two more questions, if there are any. If not, we will dismiss the student athletes. Okay? Thanks a lot, fellas.
Kansas State players will be on the dais at 1.10 p.m., so nothing until 1.10. Good. Radio check for us. Radio check for us. Yeah, so they're going to hold it about here. See if you can pump just a little bit more to this grouping. This is, the, this is what's going to be going to the radio malt. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, yeah, if they get it up closer to their mouth, it's about where it should be. But when they're down here, it's in the mud a little bit. So we really got to... Encourage them to okay. one, two. Okay. Yep.
microphone check. This is what it will sound like. Check one, two. Check one, two. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, let me look at it. Check one, two, one, two. Microphone check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I think that's pretty good.
Okay, we're going to have Kansas State in about five minutes, uh, but a couple of announcements with regard to satellite coordinates and recordings of the press conferences. Uh, we have new updated satellite coordinates. The new coordinates, this is for the entire weekend. Uh, Galaxy 17 slash K14 slot A. The downlink is 11966.5 vertical. Once again, satellite coordinates for the weekend. These are updated. Whoop. It's only confirmed for today. We'll confirm for the rest of the week later. It's only confirmed for today. Sorry. Correction. For today confirmed, we will have more information for the rest of the weekend. But for today, today's satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17 slash K14 slot A. The downlink is 11966.5 vertical. Also a reminder that Hammond Communications will post recordings of all press conferences in the NCAA's digital media hub. That is www.ncaa.veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E dot com. So www.ncaa.veritone.com. Michigan State is already in there. Kansas State will go in shortly after their press conferences, and we will continue uploading shortly after each press conference the rest of the way this weekend. Transcripts are provided by ASAP. They are usually posted shortly after the press conferences, so Michigan State is already up. K-State up, will be up shortly after, to the, after this session. Once again, Kansas State players will be up in just a few minutes. Once again, while we wait on the Kansas State players, uh, just a few reminders. One, uh, please silence your cell phone during the press conferences. Uh, just make sure they're on vibrate or off. Um, we have a couple of microphone holders on each side. When, you, when we get to the time to ask questions, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you. And then uh, once you've been called upon, please give your name and affiliation before asking your question. Uh, if it is a question specific to a player, please direct it to that player. Uh, and then the final thing with regard to uh, recording press conferences, it is illegal. Please do not do so on cell phones or cameras or anything per NCAA regulations. Once again, Kansas State players will be up in just a few minutes. And then Coach Tang following that. We do not at this time. I got important people on it.
think they're in the back there. They're still waiting on the players. Okay, K-State players are coming up right now. Once again, uh, we'll get right into it with the questions. So if you want to raise your hand now, we'll kind of start lining things up um, as the players get up here. We have senior guard Marquise Noel. 
We have junior forward Ish Masood. I'm sorry, we have uh, senior forward Keontae Johnson. Uh, I think Ish may be joining us here in a few minutes. We'll start uh, here in the middle. Um, we'll st Adam, did you want? Did you have one? Uh, hey guys, welcome to New York. Marquise, I know you're from New York. Yes, I guess for both of you guys, have you played in the garden before? And if not, what's it going to be like your first time here? What's kind of the coolest thing about walking around the garden? And um, you know, anything unique about playing here that you always dreamed about? We'll start with Marquise and then go to Keontae. Um, it's a blessing to be here, man. Got to give all the honor and glory to the man uh, above for giving me and his team this opportunity to play here. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be fun. I mean, you hear all the great stories about the historic performances of, you know, all time NBA players and, and the greats. So I'm just looking forward to, to being in this atmosphere and stepping on that court. You never played here in high school? No, I never played here. This will be my first time. Keontae? Um, like he said, it's definitely a blessing to be here, just knowing all the history of people that have played here. Um, I played here my freshman year. We played West Virginia. Um, one, so, it's, I mean, it's always a good experience coming back and just playing in the NBA arena and just knowing, like, it's something that we wanted to do when we was younger. Stay in that same row on the aisle. Go ahead. D. Scott Pritchard, uh, K-State Athletics. Marquise, um, I'm just curious if you might be able to take us through heart over height. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, you kind of blew up on social media during your last performance, and people that may not have known about you know about you now across the nation. How does that feel? Uh, it feels good, man, um, to see that your hard work, um, your faith, and you know everything is paying off. Um, so it's a blessing, man. Um, heart over height means, you know, it's a slogan I live by. Um, you don't determine um, somebody, somebody's, you know, I guess, you know, uh, destiny by their their height. Um, you determine it by their heart and their passion. And that's, you know, something that I live by and that, you know, that I play my game after. So just, you know, heart heart is the, your heart is the biggest thing. Um, and I noticed that as a young kid. And, you know, I live by that. We're going to stay on this side. We're going to go one row back. Hi, Audrey Dahlgren, WLNS in Lansing. Marquise, this question is for you. Michigan State has done a phenomenal job in the first two games shutting down the star point guards of their teams, opposing teams. And so how do you view that? Uh, what makes them so difficult in that way defensively? And going maybe more of that, that heart and passion that you're speaking to, do you relish in kind of knowing that they've shut these guys down and maybe you could be the one, you know, to succeed? Uh, I determine how the game is going to go. Um, I mean, I'm not really focused on, you know, what they did in the past versus other good point guards. I played in the toughest league in the country, which is the Big 12. Um, you have all types of Hall of Fame coaches that, you know, scout, scouted me and, you know, uh, tried to stop me. So I, I don't think that's, that's going to be an issue. I feel like this game is going to be Kansas State um, Wildcats versus Michigan State, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to win a basketball game. We'll stay on that side. One more row back. Jim Trusme, Wall Street Journal. Uh, for Keontae, um, you're an expiring story after your health scare. Um, what gave you the confidence that you could come back? And I've also seen where you credited the Kansas State medical staff for one of the reasons you chose Kansas State. Um, I just had the right circle around me. Um, just my parents, uh, the athletic trainer at Florida and K-State. Um, when I was going through the situation, we just found the right doctors, um, the best doctors in the world to figure out my situation. And every doctor's appointment I went to, everything was getting cleared. So it's just the faith, um, trusting God, just knowing he had the right path for me. And we just following his lead and just taking it day by day. We're going to crop. What? Do you have a follow up? Yeah. Are there any doctors you want to shout out, like specifically that were crucial for your you know, real? Um, Dr. Ackerman from Mayo Clinic. Come across the row in row two. Brandon Zenner, KWCH in Wichita. Marquise for you. Jerome Tang hired uh, one year ago yesterday. Tomorrow you guys take the floor in the Sweet 16. Just looking back on what this last year has meant to this program, everything that he's brought in, just, just what comes to your mind when you think about the last year? Man, it's been a special year, you know, for, for us and especially, you know, me and Ish, um, who's not up here, um, just – 
you know, we had a rough year last year, um, and we, we just stood together. Uh, we stood grounded, you know, when things weren't going our way. And um, when we realized that Coach Tang was going to be the head coach, you know, we believed in him from day one. Um, we believed in his vision that he had for, you know, us two and, and the program. Um, and to see that, you know, we taking the floor on the Sweet 16, I mean, it's just a blessing. Staying in the middle, one row back. Uh, yeah, I guess this is for both of you guys, Alec Bussey, Rivals. Um, you guys have done a lot of team building stuff off the court as far as talking about emotions and feelings, and then a lot of it is kind of carried over to social media with videos that have been posted throughout the season. Can you guys explain why it's important uh, for you guys to be able to connect with the coaching staff um, beyond a basketball level and how much you've been able to do that this season? Start with Keontae, and then we'll go to Marquise. Um, I feel like it's big it's just – I feel like Coach Tang, he do a great job of just trying to know us more as men than basketball players. Um, it's b deeper than basketball to us, so I feel like he do a great job of just keeping us all together, um, staying connected. We had team dinner at his house every Sunday, um, like during the off season, building up to the season. So, I mean, it just shows how, what character he has as a person. Um, shows like, I mean, that's really about it for me. Just, it's just deeper than basketball, really. So. Yeah. Uh, to piggyback on what he said, I mean, it's deeper than basketball, you know, with this program and this coaching staff. Um, they do a very good job of making sure that they know, you know, each player on this team. Um, they they want to know how you're feeling on a day-to-day -day basis. They want to know, you know, what you're thinking, you know. So it's deeper than basketball, you know, being at K-State. Um, and, you know, that, that gives, you know, players confidence to trust in their game plan, trust in them, and, you know, um, want to learn from them because, you know, they do a good job of making sure that you are, you know, well uh, on and off the court. So, you know, you got to give a credit to, to the whole coaching staff, to Gene Taylor and everybody behind the scenes that, that, that go into uh, winning. So. We'll stay on the aisle one row back. Christian Arnold, A of New York. Uh, Marquise, this is for you, too. Um, Tyson was here before talking. He mentioned that he remembered playing you in high school. I was curious if you remember playing him in high school. And on this stage, in this moment, is there sort of an extra appreciation for being here in, from you to be going against someone who came up from this area and is, is you're going up against uh, you know, a local rival almost? Uh, I do remember playing Tyson. I mean, he, was, he went to Christ the King uh, High School uh, with Jose Alvarado. Um, you know, I grew up, you know, playing in parks with him. Um, so I just want to give a big shout out to New York City for breeding, you know, tough and gritty guards and, you know, just give him a shout out. Um, I mean, you know, we, we are rivals, but we grew up playing against each other. Um, and when we step on the court, it's going to be nothing but competition. But um, now that I'm here, I just want to, you know, congratulate him on where he, he came from and how he, you know, got better. And now we both on this stage, so I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. It's gonna be a blessing, but you know, shout out to him. We're gonna go across the room over here. Just raise your hand so we can see you. Okay, go ahead. Marquise, this is Jerry Bembry from ESPN Anscape. You've got the social media handles of <clears throat> Mr. New York City with the <laughs> tagline "I Run New York." Can you tell the story about <laughs> why you adopted that? <laughs> Dang man, you put me on the spot. I mean, uh, um, uh, you know, it's just. Um, the confidence that I have um, in myself, I made a promise to myself, you know, back when I was in high school that I was going to do anything and everything in my, in my power to be the best player that came out of New York. So I kind of keep that edge and that kind of, you know, just reminds me every day I wake up that, you know, I still have more work to do. You know, guys like Carmelo, Bernard King and, you know, all the greats came out of New York. So that just keeps me grounded and keeps me working hard. Blow up you size has always been a factor with you are you surprised that it still comes into play with the comments from coach Cal last weekend I mean uh, I spoke to coach Cal uh, he DM'd me you know after the game and said that he apologized for you know his comment um, that he he wasn't really thinking straight after the game um, but he congratulated me on a good game on a great game um, and you know we spoke after that and he was just like you know uh, I congratulated him on, you know, his career and what he's done, you know, at Kentucky and told him that, you know, I'd be happy to see him at the Hall of Fame one day. And um, he said, yeah, you'll get there too uh, because your passion, your hard work um, will get you there. And he wanted to stay in that, 
you know, my press press conference when I do get inducted. So it was just a cool exchange. I mean, it was a cool exchange. I mean, shout out to Coach Cal for reaching out to me. That was that was really big. We'll stay on this side on the aisle. Just raise your hand so we can see you. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, for for Marquise. Um, could you kind of walk us through like your the part of New York where you grew up? You know what was it like for you growing up here? Like what was uh, it's a very big diverse city for for you? What was kind of your New York, your New York City like when you were uh, coming up? Uh, growing up in New York, I mean, you know, I grew up on 109th in Lexington. Um, I stood in the park, uh, just grinding, working on my game. Um, I had a good supporting cast who who was willing to work me out at all different times of the the, the hour. Um, and, you know, it was just a rough neighborhood, but I didn't let that affect me because I knew that, you know, God had had a bigger plan. Um, but, you know, I had my big brother, my father, and my uncles working me out, you know, every day, you know, for a moment like this, um, standing here, being here in Madison Square Garden. We've got time for two more questions. We're going to take them from this side, here in the front to start. Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Marquise, it's going to be another New York question. Um, <clears throat> you talk about gritty, tough guards. Why? why? Why does New York produce gritty, tough guards? And who, are there some that you sort of idolized? Um, I mean, just just the the environment that you in, that you grow up, grow up in. I mean, you have to be tough uh, and hard nosed, or you won't get to play on the on the you know toughest basketball courts. Um, so that that's kind of how I grew up, um, and. I grew up watching, you know, Kemba Walker, um, Isaiah Briscoe, Isaiah Whitehead, you know, and they all did some legendary things, you know, in their career. And, you know, that inspired me to keep working hard and, you know, do similar things that they've done. And we'll stay on this side right in front of me, fourth row. Go ahead. Uh, Zach Brazil at New York Post. Marquis, do, do, you, do you feel like you've proven a lot of people wrong, you know, and Coming out of high school, you, you went to Arkansas Little Rock, and you talked about the height thing. I mean, just to even be where you are, do you, do you feel like you've overcome odds? Yeah, I feel like I, I, you know, overcome a lot of odds. You know, just being in a mid-major school um, a couple years ago, not knowing, you know, what my future may hold, but just sticking that out, grinding, you know, just trusting in my work. Um, but I wouldn't say I proved a lot of people wrong. I proved myself right. You know, I knew that, you know, I'd be a high major guard um, if I just worked hard and have the right circle around me. And now that I'm here, you know, it's a blessing. Um, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless because, you know, God is good. Similar story to you. You know, he, he went to Northeastern and ended up transferring to Michigan State. I mean, do you kind of see yourself a little in him just in terms of the road you guys have taken? Um... I feel like we have similar, you know, you know, journeys. I mean, you know, he grew up, you know, in similar backgrounds like me. Um, and, you know, we just worked hard. Um, we eliminated all distractions. Um, and we put basketball first. And that's why you get to see uh, Tyson at a Michigan State. You get to see Jose Alvarado, you know, at in the NBA. So just, you know, it's – not a lot of people get to make it, you know, where we come from. So that's why I wanted to shout him out, you know, for making it to the stage. Okay. Marquise, Keontae, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for taking the time. We'll have Coach Tang up here in just a few minutes or maybe a few seconds. Coach Tang, welcome to New York. Thank you. Great, Great to be to here. Great to have you here. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll go to questions. Once again, same as with the players, we'll bring a microphone over to you. Just give your name and affiliation before asking your question. So, Coach, you want to get us started? Yeah. Uh, first, I just want to thank the good Lord for this opportunity to uh, be the head coach at Kansas State and with this group of young men and uh, be playing in Madison Square Garden. I mean, uh, it's a dream come true for kids, adults, it doesn't matter if it's your first time as a head coach or 
like Coach Izzo, his 25th consecutive NCAA tournament. I mean, it, it's, it's just a blessing to be here, and it's hard to do, and so extremely thankful. We'll start down here in the front, down far left. Hey, Coach. Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Uh, you got about a handful of New Yorkers on this team. Is there something about New York players? I, I know you didn't recruit all of them, some of them you inherited, but is there something about New York players that are is, uh, especially um, that stands out? Um, well, their accents. <laughs> um, you know, no, it just worked out. Keith and uh, Ish, uh, they were our chief recruiters, right? And uh, we were flipping over every rock, watching every film, talking to as many people as we could to try and assemble a team. And uh, they did a great job of hosting guys. And I think uh, the other guys felt comfortable knowing that we had some New York guys. But I think Kansas State has a history of having – uh, good players from New York, Curtis Kelly, um, J.O., you know, we, we've had multiple guys in the past, so, um, you know, I, I'm thankful for it. I know that. We'll go over here to the aisle in row two. Go ahead. Uh, Brandon Zenner, KWCH in Wichita. Coach, you spent a number of years with Paul Mills at Baylor, and you didn't take time, you didn't waste time going to social media and uh, giving him praise. Just what were your takeaways of your time with him? Um, and what makes him, you know he's going to be successful uh, with the Shockers. Yeah, well, I, I absolutely love Paul Mills. Um, he's like a brother to me. And uh, so, so happy for him and his family, for Wendy and the girls. And he's going to be incredible because he is passionate about young people and about developing young men. And there's no, like, there's no throttle, like, hold back governor on him in his love for what, what he pours into his guys. And so, yeah, he, he attracts, you know, we always, we, he, he's the one that told me, he said, you know, Tang, Tang, 10s hang with 10s and one hangs with one. And he's a 10, and he's going to have some 10s around him. We'll stay in that aisle one row back. Alec Bussey, Rivals. Coach Tang, you've spoke a lot this year about developing your players into good men, good wives, or good husbands, excuse me, uh, good fathers, all those different things. Can you explain how you and your staff have been able to teach those lessons through conversations this season? You know, I heard uh, there was a famous pastor, and he said, um, every day preach the gospel and sometimes use words. And so it's not what we say to them, it's what they see us live. And our guys have got to come into our homes and uh, have dinner, and uh, they, they don't just know where the, the bathrooms are, they know where the knives and the forks are, right? So they've seen us love our wives and raise our children and, and discipline our children, and they, they've, seen, they've seen the whole gamut of what it looks like to be a, a man of character and, and someone who loves his wife and, and how they raise their families. And so I think more than anything else, our, my coaching staff is an example of it to them and hopefully some of it sinks in as they move forward. I believe it will. We'll go across the room on the right side here in row three. Hey, Coach. Scott Reese, KCTV, Kansas City. Uh, I've also got a quick follow-up after this, but you've got a, a, a trio of rotational guys who are from New York. I'm just wondering, is there any sort of psychology, anything to, to coaching them up? You clearly don't need to motivate them. Do you need to talk them down at all before going out on this stage? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, every guy is kind of like senior night, except maybe on steroids. You know, your seniors, uh, some of them are going to try too hard, and some of them are going to try too hard to try to not try too hard, right? And you just have to see where it's at after that first media and then figure out what you have to say to each of them, and uh, we'll, we'll have a good feel for that. Uh, second of all, I happened to see you wandering around Times Square last night. I'm just wondering, favorite part of wandering around the streets in New York? Well, uh, I got to be with my wife, so I knew where the credit card was. <laughs> no, I, I love Junior's Cheesecake, so we went and got some cheesecake. <laughs> We're going to come back to the aisle on that side. Yep, we'll start in the fourth row there. Hi, Coach. Meredith Cash from Insider. Um, thanks for talking with us. I... No, you mentioned a little bit earlier just how much this moment means, and it's a dream to adults, kids. I know it probably means something a little bit more to Keontae, given everything he's gone through. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that journey and what it's like to watch him on this stage now? And also, I know that you uh, were with Jared Butler at Baylor, who went through something similar, um, and 
can you tell us if you know having that experience helped you with that well first of all having the experience with jared and a couple other guys at baylor gave me the comfort level that i knew that i could help him get into basketball shape um, having dealt with those doctors before i was very confident when they told me what his situation was and that he was good to play and if it was their son they would be on the court also um, watching Keontae just continue to grow as a player uh, and, and do the spectacular things on the court has been extremely rewarding but not near as rewarding as watching him be thankful every day for the opportunity I mean if you watch him like this dude's an all-american and he always wears the team shoes Right? He doesn't have, like, most guys want to sh have their own thing. He always wears the team shoes, and he doesn't complain. And he plays video games with the walk-ons. You know, everybody in the locker room loves him. You know, and, I mean, he's just a great teammate. And so that's the thing to me that's been the most rewarding, to see someone as talented as him uh, be really thankful for this opportunity and then display it with his actions. We'll stay on the aisle right up here in front. Uh, D. Scott Fritch and Case Head Athletics coach uh, heard an interesting stat today that since 1990, Marquise and Morant are the only two NCAA players to have 40 points and 20 assists by the Sweet 16. I'm curious just what you can say about Marquise at this point. Uh, he's, you know, I, like I say, big time players make big time plays and big time moments and uh, this is the biggest stage for college basketball, and uh, I'm really thankful that, you know, we tell our guys all the time that hard work pays off, and I'm really thankful that God's allowing his hard work to pay off right now. We'll stay on the aisle one row back. Hi, Audrey, Audrey Dahlgren, WLNS. Hello? Oh, there we go. Sorry. Audrey Dahlgren, WLNS in Lansing, Michigan. When Tom Izzo found out that he was going to be facing you guys, he sort of compared his journey at Michigan State to yours in a way, learning under a very storied coach as he did with Judd Heathcote. And I'm just wondering how much that experience for you under Scott Drew, you know, it got you to where you are today and just the, the relation between the two, I guess, maybe with Izzo as well. You know, I, I, I've been – that. thank you for sharing that story. I didn't know Coach Izzo told me in the – out in front of the, the building that he just told a whole bunch of lies about me. <laughs> but Tom Izzo, man, is just a class act, and I've followed him for a long time, and the fact that as an assistant he knew my name, it, like, blew me away, you know, and um, just to watch what he's done and um, how he's handled his program and loved his players and had, like, tremendous success on and off the court, you know, uh, uh, how he handled the tragedy at Michigan State this year. Um, I mean, everybody can learn from that. And uh, I was blessed to work with Scott, and, and he did a great job of helping prepare me for this. And uh, he never, never treated me as an assistant, always told me to act like a head coach and treat the program like it was mine. So I, I do believe that when you're with guys like Judd Heathcote and Scott Drew, that you those, those Hall of Fame kind of guys, they, they help prepare you. You learn so much from them so that you are ready for this. And uh, and I'm just thankful. I, I told Coach Izzo, I'd, I wish it was me and him playing to see who goes to the Elite Eight, right? <laughs> it's going to be our teams. And so we're not going to do anything. It's about those guys out there on the floor. And I wouldn't want to shoot free throws against him, though, because I, I know he's really good at that. We'll come across the room on this side uh, here in row three. What's been the thing that's impressed you the most watching watching film of, of, of Michigan State coming in to, 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 to Thursday? Well, this is not the first time we've I've gone against a Michigan State team. And one of the things that's super impressive is how quickly they get the ball out the net and up the floor after the other team scores. So you, like, transition. We call it the bookends, right? The moment they touch the ball, uh, then the end of it and how great they rebound. So those two things we have to, to be prepared for, stopping them in transition, getting back, building the wall, making them play in the half court. And then at the end, when they take a shot, is being able to corral the ball and limit their, their second chance opportunities. And then they just play with Coach Izzo's toughness, you know, that gritty toughness fights you for every inch of the court on every dribble and every pass. And 
And so, um, and they got really good players that, that do those things. And so that, that makes it really hard. We'll stay on this side, uh, a couple rows back on the aisle, and then we got two more over there, and then we'll wrap it up. So go ahead over here. Michael Cohen from Fox Sports. Uh, Jerome, I'm curious, when you were putting this team together, what were some of the things you learned, the do's and don'ts and best practices of the transfer portal in what amounts to a lot of very brief uh, recruitments as you try and put guys together in a short span? Mm. Well, I'm not going to go into detail on that because then it gives the – you know, the, the formula away to other people. We all have to live in the portal. Um, but, you know, for me, the number one thing I looked for was winners and guys who had won in high school and college And because uh, winners know that it takes a certain level of sacrifice in order to win. And so that was, for me, the most important thing. We'll go over across the way. Yep, on the edge there. Just raise your hand so Coach can see you. Yep, Hi, go Coach ahead. Jerry Bembry from ESPN Anscape. In this day and age when there's constant player movement, um, what was the impact of Marquise's decision to stay when you came on board? <laughs> huge, huge. Uh, um, the, the really cool thing about it is that, and I found this out after, probably a month or two after I got the job, um, that Marquise had actually texted Gene Taylor, our athletic director, during the search and told him that, like, give him in my name. Like, hey, I'm going to help this, that, that Marquise was willing to stay to help the program win, right? And, but, like, he told him, hey, look at Jerome Tang. And so when I got there, and I didn't know this, in our, my very first meeting with the team, he had unbelievable eye contact, and he was, had, was nodding his head, like, in agreement with the things I was saying. And I just felt there was a heart connection there. And from the moment, after that meeting on, he's been all on board. So, yeah, we're not here without Marquise Noel staying. And we'll go one row back, the young man right behind him. Lillian Johnson, Sports Illustrated Kids. Um, Coach Tang, how are you trying to emulate from the Baylor program, and how are you trying to pave your own way from the Baylor program? Man, that is a terrific question. Uh, well, you know, uh, Scott really ex exemplify what it is to be a – a servant leader and so following in that mold of leadership that like you know I'm here to serve these guys our staff our community you know our, and and so being a servant leader is something that I, I want to embrace uh, I want our guys to have incredible experiences that have nothing to do with winning and losing um, for them to understand that that uh, there's a great life for them after the ball stops bouncing, but they've got to be great men and great husbands and great fathers and the characteristics and that you have to have in order to do those things. Um, paving my own way, uh, I don't know. I, I hadn't really thought about that. I, I just, I, I want, I want uh, the people who work for me uh, to, with me, let me change that. The people who work with me to feel like it's their program and I want them to take ownership of the areas that I give them and run with it and I want our players to be able to feel like they can be themselves. That seems like a good question to end on, Coach. We appreciate you taking the time. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Go Cats. We will have uh, FAU will be up here in just a few minutes. Scheduled for 150. that That'll be head coach Dusty May. We'll have head coach Dusty May, and then we will have uh, select FAU players. Once again, a reminder, the Kansas State press conferences, Ham Communications will be posting those on the NCAA's digital media hub. That is www.ncaa.veritone.com. Once again, www.ncaa.veritone.com. Uh, those, the Michigan State pressers are already up there. K-State will be up shortly. Transcripts are being provided by ASAP. Those will also be posted shortly. Michigan State is already up there.
but they're like right around the corner. So. <laughs> mayhem? Is it mayhem right now? It was just that. Like, it was just they were not taking so long. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, like they're in a world that like you know, uh, you know the next team is like ten minutes after. Like if it had been Michigan State, it's like you got four minutes. There's plenty of like this <laughs> window. <laughs> Good man. You know what? It's like a duck, right? Yeah. Everything on top of the water is smooth, but underneath, oh, yeah. going like, crazy. I was like, All right, we're going to have Coach May up here in a few minutes, but before that, just a couple of announcements. Once again, uh, we have updated satellite coordinates for today's press conferences. Uh, satellite coordinates, Galaxy 17 slash K14 slot A, and the downlink is 11966.5 vertical. Once again, satellite coordinates, this is for today's press conferences. Galaxy 17 slash K14 slot A, and the downlink is 11966.5 vertical. A couple of announcements for those in the press conference area. Once again, uh, we ask that you silence your cell phones. Either put them on vibrate or turn them off while the press conference is in, is in session. Uh, we have a couple of microphone holders, so when we get to the time for questions, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Uh, when you are called upon, please give your name and affiliation before asking your question. Uh, when the players get here, please, you know, direct your question to a specific player so that Hammond can get the right microphones going and stuff. Uh, recording press conferences on cell phones, cameras is prohibited per NCA rules. If you are on Zoom for either of these meeting, either of these sessions with FAU, please use the raise hand function. If we have time, we will get to those Zoom questions. We'll have Coach May here in just a minute or two.
right. We have FAU head coach Dusty May. Coach, welcome. Thank you. Great to have you here. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and then we will open it up to questions. Once again, we do have microphone holders. Uh, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you if you can do name and affiliation before asking your question. But we'll start with Coach May with an opening statement. Thanks. Extremely excited to be playing in the Garden in this week's 16. What a moment for our guys, and uh, we're here to compete. All right, we'll start over here on the end on this side. Hey, Coach. John Evanson, CBS 12 News. Uh, you mentioned this in your post-game press conference last time, I think a few other times. I always I keep hearing that word Cinderella come up when people are talking about FAU. I know you guys don't consider yourself a Cinderella team, but uh, you know, is this something you take offense to, or is it just sort of an eye roller? Neither. It, we'll, we'll embrace it, whatever they want to call us. Uh, but we're very, very confident in our abilities and those guys in the locker room. So we've never thought of ourselves in that regard just because of the success of our league and, and our guys being able to do what they did over a 20-game schedule. So, uh, but we'll take it. Whatever, whatever gets the people cheering for us, we're, uh, you know, we're open. We'll stay at the end on the front row here, Adam. Hey, Dusty. Adam Zagoria, New York Times. Good to see you. Um, just playing at the Garden, any cool stories or anecdotes – from your players, how many of them have never played here before? How many have played here? And um, anything they've said so far, just kind of wide-eyed and amazed at being here? Very few have played here. Nick Boyd on our team, his uncle is Freddie Hill, so he came here every year for the Big East tournament. So he's told our guys about it, but obviously it's, it's mostly television, the hype surrounding the garden and the Mecca and all those things. So they're excited to be here, but uh, our guys have proven all year that it, it, the, the stage isn't too big and the lights aren't too bright. They'll be, if we lose to Tennessee, it's because they beat us. We'll stay on that side in the back there on the end. Just raise your hand so we can see you. Yep, go ahead. Hi, Coach. John Burton from uh, News Channel 5 and WNSR Radio in Nashville. Um, just curious, when you see Tennessee on film and their ability to defend, especially ball screens and the way they, they can use their physicality, what stands out the most when you, when you break them down? How well they keep the ball out of the paint and then close to shooters with their size, length. But most importantly, it's their intensity and their physicality. They, they play every single possession like it's their last. And we'll still we'll go run row behind him. Hey, Dusty, Paul Meyerberg with USA Today. Um, I know you have a slightly different background than, than many of your coaching peers. I'm curious if you could please tell me how your experience at IU informed your coaching career and if there are still things that you learned as an 18 to 22 year old that you find useful today. 100%. Um, I played Division II one year and ran cross country and transferred. So I came as a freshman manager as a sophomore in college. So I had a little bit of a, of a gap year. Um, but it, it, the, the entire journey is, has hopefully prepared me to be in the position I'm in, but I learned so much. You know, you volunteer 40 to 80 hours a week just to learn from a, a legend, an uh, expert coach, expert teacher. So, um, you know, I, I take a lot. I take something daily from what I learned from, from that experience. We're going to come over the other side here about midway through. Yep. Go ahead. Hi, Amanda Kristovich from Front Office Sports. Um, Kind of building off of the Cinderella question, you could argue that your program maybe has fewer financial resources than some of the other schools, let's put it that way. Um, could you speak to how you know, your program has gotten to this point despite um, you know, not having maybe the same budgets as the... Well, I think a lot of our guys in, in today's climate, uh, a lot of places are getting the, more of a finished product where a lot of our guys came in with a chip on their shoulder. They had the talent, but what separated them is their work ethic and their drive to be successful and probably being a little bit under recruited. Uh, it, it contributes to that, but it's just a really special group where they like each other. They compete against each other like it's life and death. And then they're in the locker room hanging out for several hours. So it's a really bl uh, unique blend of, of uh, personalities and characters. But the one commonality is they're a very competitive and hardworking group. I guess that's two commonalities. We'll go right here in the front. I think on each side of the aisle, we'll start on the left side. Ralph Russo with the Associated Press. Coach, um, your team is shooting about 29% from three in the two games, but it's, it's, um, it's about right for the rest of the tournament. I think 31% overall. Is there any reason why the shooting has been so bad in this tournament? That's a great question for this tournament. We haven't shot the ball well in seven or eight games, and that's, that's typically what we've hung our hat on. 
Uh, but because we've been able to make a leap in, in defensively and rebounding and we don't turn the ball over like we have in years in the past, we've actually, the last few years, we've been a good offensive team except we've turned the ball over, which has negated our three-point shooting ability and our offensive rebounding ability. So we haven't shot well in a while. Fortunately, our guys do believe that we can find a way to win because we are scrappy, gritty, and we rebound the ball. And, and, and our defense has come a long way, especially over the last month of the season. We'll stay in the front on the other side of the aisle. Uh, Chris Eisman, Bergen Record. Um, when you were recruiting uh, Nick Boyd when he was at the Bosco Institute, what, what stood out to you about him? Um, I went to see John L. Davis in Gary, Indiana, to play a game after we had, he was either committed or signed. And uh, I, I know Dave Maravella, who runs Bosco, and they had practice that day. So usually when you go watch a game, you try to stop in and, and, and kill two birds with one stone. I stopped in and watched a practice, and Gonzaga was actually there watching him that day, and um, an assistant from Gonzaga. and, and it was more his leadership, his personality, and then for whatever reason, I've always had an affection for lefties, and, and he, so he could pass the ball, he could shoot it. Um, he didn't look like the guards in our league because he wasn't as physically developed, but as we got to know Nick, we, we uh, I guess, realized how driven he was and how special of a person he is, and, and, and that's contributed to his success because he, he grew late, and he's, he's an incredibly hard worker. I've never been around a harder worker than Nick Boyd. We'll stay on that side of the aisle, but we'll go to the back there. Go ahead. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. This is a two-parter, Dusty. You guys are 10-1 and one in games decided by five or less points. Just what's made you guys so efficient in those nail-biter games, and, and how much of that can be coached versus you know, the group kind of figuring some of that out on their own? I guess I'll be honest. We were 0-8 last year in the same games, um, and, and I, we've, done, we've done a lot of uh, self-evaluation to figure out why. Typically, uh, you miss a free throw, you have a bad break, uh, a 10% three-point shooter throws one in, things like that. It's the randomness of winning and losing. And for some reason, it was never in our favor last year, and it's been in our favor this year. So I wish it was more complex than that. And I do think veteran guards, guys that have been in those positions, you can go practice free throws, but until you felt those moments and that intensity and that pressure, it's hard to do it. And now our guys did it last year. We weren't successful. They put in a lot of work. And now I think just the belief after we got the first couple. We'll stay on that side in the middle. Yep, one row up. Grant Ramey with On Three Sports. Dusty, what is it about this Tennessee team that compares them to Australian rugby rules? <laughs> well, I, I feel bad because I, I combine two sports. There's Australian rules football, and then there's rugby. And I should have known that, but it was the first thing that came into my mind. Um, it's the most physical sport without pads that I've ever watched or, or have ever seen. Um, and I know that was taken, I guess, in, in different ways. Uh, if you said that our team's extremely physical, extremely aggressive, extremely intense. I would I'd tell the staff and the players, you guys are doing a great job because that's what I want them to say about us defensively. So I didn't see the Duke game, have no idea. I had just heard there were, you know, through Twitter, there were some comments made. But uh, I say that in the most complimentary fa way possible. Coach Barnes is a legend. It hasn't changed. When I was at Florida, they were the same way. And, and it was hard to make a pass, let alone score a basket against them. So. We'll stay in that row. We're going to go across the aisle, though. Yep. D Dusty Tom Canavan with the Associated Press. When you talk about bulky, you talk about sand and beaches and hot weather. And to be perfectly honest, when you got in the tournament, I had to figure out where Boca <laughs> was. So I'm just wondering, you had you, when you took over, I mean, I heard that you could have, if you went to a game, you could have a whole section to yourself as far as a fan. What has changed? Great question. Well, n number one, in South Florida, there are a lot of people from the East Coast that like basketball. So we talked about building the fan base one fan at a time. But when we started winning, and we won in spurts the last couple of years, we just we weren't able to sustain it like we did this year. Um, people started coming, and our, great, our, our, our crowd started growing incrementally. Well, this year, our guys, they share the ball, they pass it, they play incredibly hard, they play with intensity, and they're likable during the game, after the game, at halftime on campus so I think all those things rolled into one allowed us to sell out I think our last seven games in an area where it's hard to get people into the gymnasium especially this time of year with with the snowbirds and whatnot so I think a lot of things go into it but our guys have, have captivated a, 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 an area and a university we'll stay on this side yep yeah coach Gentry asked this Tennessee and knowing Mike White Brian how well do you know Danny, and how special do you think it's going to be for Brian to go against his brother in this game? I know Danny well, and I think it'll be gut wrenching for both of them to compete against their brothers. We'll come up here on the aisle. We'll go each side of the aisle here. Hi, this is the uh, Zach Weinberger, Palm Beach Post. 
Uh, can you just kind of talk about a little bit of how you, know, you had that eight to nine man rotation like you've been doing the whole season? Can you talk about how important Vladislav Gold is going to be in this in this next game, especially when Tennessee has a seven foot center of their own? Well, Vlad's extremely important in almost every game, and when he's been uh, not been in foul trouble, we've played well for most of the season. Vlad hasn't played his best the last couple games. Fortunately, Rosados came in and, and really held down the fort and caused a matchup problem in our first two rounds. So that's the beauty of our team. Every player has an off night. Every player has a bad game or two. And I think it alleviates some pressure and stress when you know this guy that's going in for me has, has got it today and you're probably going to have it tomorrow. And if not, then he's going to have it again tomorrow. So I do think that that's uh, alleviated a lot of stress this year, knowing that we are too deep in almost every position. And we'll go on the other side of the aisle there. Hey, Russ Steinberg from Boardroom. Uh, it's been a couple of days since your second round win. Uh, just wondering if you could kind of take us through the last few days, what it's been like, you know, getting back to campus, what the buzz has been like uh, around the program uh, the last few days? We've only seen campus through social media and, and videos online. We decided after the game, we finished late, I guess it was Saturday night, we decided that uh, the families, administration, band, cheerleaders, everyone but our team was going back to Boca for a few days, and we were going to get a commercial flight out of Columbus to New York on Sunday. We got here Sunday late afternoon, gave the, day, the guys the day off, gave them basically all afternoon until 10 p.m. to go see the city. Some of them did Broadway shows. Some of them went to Times Square. They did whatever they wanted to do in the city. And then we said on Monday we, we, we attacked Tennessee preparation with 100% focus. Uh, we would have only been back one day. It would have been tough travel. And our guys, there would have been many distractions if you've been to our, to our campus. We've got two more questions. We'll do one in front here, and then we'll go back to the back. West Rucker, 24-7 Sports. Dusty, everybody with, with Tennessee talks about the physicality. Who are maybe the most physical couple teams you can remember your team playing this season? And on top of that, how important is it for y'all to, to get this pace, this game, to be played the way y'all want it played? Well, North Texas in our league is – they're one of the better defensive teams in the country every single year, and they're incredibly physical. They don't have the mass Tennessee has, but they have a similar style where they challenge everything. They they put their chest on you. They, um, you know, they they, they play in just a, a rough physical manner, and they've done it, and it's successful. They actually just advanced to the NIT Final Four um, last night with a win at Oklahoma State. So it's it's very similar to that. But we need the we need the game to be a little bit more open. We need to find a way to rebound and then attack and transition because we intend them sending forward to the offensive glass. And then we'll go back to the back there on the right side. Hey, Dusty. Um, how was, what have you guys done as a program to uh, adapt to the transfer portal and roster management, player evaluation and retention? And, and do you believe that it's made things more difficult for programs such as yours, meeting the portal, compared to how it's impacted Michigan State or Tennessee or Kansas State, for example? Well, it has impacted those guys as well. I, I, you know, I, I watched the Texas A&M game, and their starting center, I guess, played at Michigan State at one point. So it, it's impacted everyone. Fortunately for us, eight of our top nine guys were back from last year, and then we had Nick Boyd sit, sitting out. So essentially we had nine of our top ten back. And going forward, we have 12 of our 13 back next year. Um, Hopefully, I'm not sitting here or sitting somewhere with a new roster. You know, it, it's the climate. Every time we have lost a player in the portal, we feel like we've had an upgrade. And now with the exposure of our program, but we like our guys. We like our team. They have a chip on their shoulder. But without a doubt, it, it's going to be fluid every single day. And until the ball's tipped up next season, you may not know truly who your roster is going to be. And it's, it's part of it. Uh, luckily, I'm still relatively young and have a lot of energy because I don't think there's going to be a, a day where you can just relax <laughs> and not fear of your phone buzzing. Okay, Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, guys. We'll have FAU players here in just a few minutes, maybe even just one minute.
Okay. Welcome, gentlemen. We have uh, redshirt freshman guard Nick Boyd. We have sophomore guard John L. Davis. And we have sophomore guard Giancarlo Rosado. Once again, uh, if you have questions, just raise your hand. We have a couple of microphone holders. We'll get the microphones over to you. Please give your name and affiliation before asking your question. Also, silence your cell phones. Uh, either vibrate or turn them off, and we'll go from there. We'll start here on the aisle, row three. Go ahead. Uh, this one's for Nick. What's up, Nick? What's going on? What's going on? Zach Weinberger, Palm Beach Post. Uh, Coach said that, you know, you went from Columbus uh, straight to New York, and you guys yes, kind of had a day off to kind of roam the city and do yes, whatever. Sir. Can you just kind of go through that day, and how, how was it kind of exploring the city? Uh, it was fun. Um, it was a time for us just to wind down, get away from basketball a little bit. I mean, we've been on the road consecutively uh, from um, – the conference tournament to now, uh, we took a couple days to see the selection and stuff like that, but we really haven't been home, so to be able to just roam around in a new area where people really haven't been to, um, it was fun. We've seen a lot of different things, a different culture, and um, I was able to show some, some of the te my teammates around, so it was fun. We'll come up here in the front on the right side. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, guys. Adam Zagoria, New York Times. Um, just being at the Garden for all of you, have any of you played here before? Is this your first time here? What's kind of the coolest thing about being at the garden has anything you know looking at the pictures walking around the building has anything really stuck out to you or excited we'll, you? we'll start with Giancarlo then we'll go John L then Nick it's my first time at the garden uh it's kind of surreal walking in here after years of watching basketball games and you're finally here it's actually smaller than I thought I thought it was gonna be bigger than that but it's, it's nice though it's my first time here uh, I just I didn't think how it was going to be it was on TV. It just seemed, seemed so different. It just seemed bigger. That's, that's what he said. Um, I've been here multiple times as a spectator, though. Uh, watched the Big East tournament. My uncle was coaching in it, so um, that was fun. So uh, to be able to be on the court now, uh, obviously a different feeling, and um, I'm ready to embrace it all. We'll stay on this side. We'll go a few rows back. Go ahead. Just raise your hand so the guys can see you. Hi, uh, Giancarlo. Uh, Tom D'Angelo from the Palm Beach Post. Um, Carlo and Janelle or Nick, uh, this year when you hit the when you cracked the top 25, what kind of validation did that give you? Did you feel that was a a point where you all the hard work was now being recognized and it kind of you know kind of give you some momentum for the rest of the season? We'll do the same order, Giancarlo, then Janelle, then Nick. Uh, to be honest, it it really just gave the team a different type of confidence. If I'm being honest, uh, since May, I've been saying this a lot, but since May, June. The guys been – all 15 guys been putting in a lot of work. So when we seen that number by name, we, I think it just gave us more of a reality, like, like, we, we, like we're, we're uh, legit. Uh, uh, getting a number by name, it just felt different. Just, just everybody recognized what we could do. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, it gave us a little validation. Um, we uh, – I like the number, but I feel like – when we don't have the number, we play with a little more chip on our shoulder at first, but uh, we got used to it and uh, we embraced it. And um, like you said, it gave us a little bit of confidence, but uh, we just felt like when we had that number, we were really like that. We're going to stay on this side, front row on the aisle. Go ahead. Uh, Chris Eisman, Bergen Record. Um, Nick, after graduating from St. Mary's and kind of betting on yourself and going out to the Bosco Institute, believing that you were a Division One player, what has it meant to you to be in this experience, to be – um, on this stage, I mean, how crazy has this been? Uh, man, uh, it's really crazy. Uh, I probably never pictured this for myself, to be honest with you. But um, just working hard, staying with it, uh, never quitting. Um, I mean, I, I can't really put into words what it feels to be able to have my family come and watch me play out here and be in the Sweet 16, not just no regular, degular type event, like the best high level, most watched basketball event this weekend. So, um, man, like you said, uh, it's a blessing, and I gotta thank God for it. We're gonna come across this side in front of me on the far yeah. side, like row four. Go ahead, Nick. This is for you, Christian Arnold, AM New York. You talked about being here as a spectator and, and for the Big East tournament. And any of those moments that you were here, did you ever envision yourself getting the opportunity to play on this court? And um, you know, what has this you know experience been like so far? Uh, to be completely honest, like I said, <laughs> I really didn't really ex like uh, expect myself to. Uh, 
to be in this, in this situation or opportunity or have this opportunity. Um, I mean, I grew up like watching Sean Hall, like Isaiah Whitehead hit the game winner in the Big East Championship. Like I was there for that. Uh, Sterling Gibbs hitting the game winner against Villanova back in the day. I was there for that. Um, just moments like that that I never really thought I would be a part of. But um, to be here with these guys and everything like that, uh, it makes it more special. And I feel like we got something to prove and uh, I'm looking forward to it. We're going to go on the aisle here on the left side. Go ahead in the back. Ben McKee, 24-7 Sports. Nick, just what has stood out to you about Tennessee and, and this week's preparation and just how well prepared do you all feel that you, you can match their physicality? Um, yeah, like you said, the physicality stood out to me from, from, uh, from the jump. I mean, everybody calls our phones and says, you sure you're ready for Tennessee? You know they're physical, right? So, um, I mean, I feel like that's been the, the trend for us the whole year. We're an undersized group, but um, we got heart. And, uh, you know, you just got to get yourself mentally prepared and mentally ready to really bang and uh, be physical and try to match that as best as you can and uh, give yourself a chance to go to the lead eight. Stay on the same row on the other side of the aisle. This is a two-parter for any of you guys. You guys are really, have been really good in close games throughout this season. Just why do you think that's been the case? And Dusty said that that wasn't the case last year. So what do you think's changed on that front? Let's have Giancarlo, and then we'll do John L after that for, the, for that question. I feel like it all just reverts back to, back to the work, back to what this team has built, back to all 15 guys buying into the program. And, uh, and when, you, when, you, when you practice so hard, as hard as we do, and, and go as hard as we do. When you get in those tight games, we don't get tight. When the game get tight, we, we, we get looser and we, we play more free. So it's like it started there. And John L? I feel like uh, from day one, everybody just believed in each other from, from the jump. Then when we got in the close moments, we, everybody was close. OK, uh, over on the far right side, I think toward the back, yep, in the very back row. Go ahead. Nick or John L, Tyler Mansfield, Rivals.com. It seems like your, your guard play this year has been so good, whether it's you 2 or Greenlee or Elijah Martin. You guys move the ball so well. You spread the floor. What's been the key to that success and your chemistry on the floor together? Um, we all bought in. Nobody really cares who gets the shine, who gets the the, the buzz or the credit. Um, we all we all want to do it for each other. Uh, we noticed that like we can go as far as, as possible by doing it with each other, and uh, that's what we're bought into. We'll come up a couple more rows on that far side. Yep. Theo Dorsey, uh, ESPN West Palm. Uh, Giancarlo, just for you, um, they talk so much about the physicality of Tennessee. You're one of the bigs, and, and Dusty even talked about how you stepped up here in the tournament with Vlad, maybe not giving exactly what they needed at certain points or foul trouble. For you, how much do you hear that physicality uh, narrative and it kind of, as the big man, as one of the big men on this team, you kind of want to make sure that, you know, you guys are able to set a statement that this isn't a team that's not too physical for you? Hey, we bringing our hard hat. We know we know Tennessee physical, but we ain't, we ain't worried about that. We, we're going. It's gonna be a physical game. We scrappy. They scrappy. We're gonna we're gonna compete tomorrow. Okay, uh, we're staying on that side, back row on the aisle. Yep. Sam Fetterman, Mid Major Madness. You guys caught the ire of a lot of people on the internet after Elijah's dunk attempt um, at the end of the game. Uh, do you guys relish being now some people's villain, or is this? Do you have any comments on that? Uh, We'll go with Nick, then John L, then Giancarlo, unless uh, Nick just wants to be the one to answer for the group. I'm gonna answer. We we, we all we all good guys. We we not villains. Um, what happened? Uh, that was totally uh, just out of emotion. It, it was not meant to to be personal or disrespectful to anybody. Uh, we just we want to be good guys out here. We not we not villains. We just having fun. Okay, we'll come across the way, uh, fifth row in the middle. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, uh, Dan McQuaid, the Duff Factor Media. Um, I saw in the last game you guys ran that like football inbounds play. Yeah. Um, this is for anybody. If you could just talk about like what like what did you feel like when you f were first introduced to this play, and you know, uh, do you like running it? Let's start with Nick, and then we'll go John <laughs> Allen, G, and Carlo. So uh, Nick, that, go ahead. That football co play is what Coach showed us. Um, he, t I'm pretty sure. Uh, I mean, a lot of people run it. Um, I've seen it used other places, and uh, it works. So when we first seen it, we were kind of confused, but um. I mean, hey, it, it helped us win the game last, uh, whatever day that was, and um, it works. John L. Uh, the coach drew it up. We just believed in what it, what, what he drew up. And Giancarlo. Man. Coach May, man, uh, beautiful play caller. Uh, <laughs> That's the best just, coach in the country. Best coach, hands down. Uh, we just listen to what he say. It's a pretty good play. It's it's uh, it's for him to get somebody open. Everybody go deep and somebody get open. But uh, you know, good play. Yeah. 
He does that a lot. Uh, we'll come up here on the aisle. Uh, we'll start on the left side of the aisle, and then we'll go across the way. So left side of the aisle here, row three. Uh, this is for Giancarlo and Janelle, uh, Zach Weinberger, Palm Beach Post. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about the, about the day Monday, the day off, kind of exploring the city, but also just trying to mo kind of take those emotions, put them to the side, and focus on the, on the right. game plan Tuesday? Uh, start was, with Giancarlo. It was, a, it was a great day. I was out with uh, Nick Boy, the boys. Uh, Nick from here, so he was showing us around. But it was just a good day to decompress, you know, just wind down, get everything out from uh, Ohio, just get a feel for Madison Square. It's a lot going on. I'm from West Palm, so it's, it's a lot going on here. So it was just a good day to, like, you know, get everything going. <laughs> and John L. Just being here, this is my first time being here, so I was just soaking everything in, pause. But, <laughs> but uh, it just – being here really like coming from where I come from, you you don't see nobody like this for real. All right, we'll go across the aisle on the other side. Hey, Rocco Miller here with BracketsHere.org. Good to see you guys. Uh, so I just couple two part question. One, I don't think enough people talk about your defense. <clears throat> it's been top thirty five all year, top fifteen against field goal percentage. Um, maybe to speak to what you can do against this Tennessee team that goes through droughts. And then number two, how big of is a priority and a goal since the beginning to get to Houston and make the Final Four? Let's start with Nick, and then we'll work our way down. So, Nick, if you want to address the first question about defense. Uh, I think our defense is, uh, is pretty good. Like you said, the numbers uh, speak for themselves. Uh, I mean, people – I just think people underestimate us because of our size, but, you know, a lot of people don't understand that when they get out there with us, it's a different feel and uh, it's a different, t different intensity, and we're very scrappy. Let's have John L. talk about the defense as well. Uh, Coach May just stressed it from day one about defense, defense, defense. Anything happens, we just lock in on defense. And then Giancarlo, why don't you address the second question about get, just trying to get to Houston? Yeah, the goal, the goal to get to Houston from the beginning, has that been the goal? Okay. Know, the goal. Okay. Uh, we take it in one game at a time right now. Uh, we're, really focused, we're really locked in and focused on Tennessee. Uh, and we, 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 we really just, we wear our feet at. We're not worried about Houston right now. If we're blessed enough to get to Houston, we'll take care of business when we get there. But we're trying to take care of business tomorrow night. We probably got time for one more question if there is one for the student athletes, and then we're going to dismiss them if we have no other questions. Fellas, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. All right. Appreciate, Appreciate you guys. Y take care. Tell him I said, what's up? problems <laughs> just a reminder by the way the Hammond communications will post a recording of the these press conferences the FAU press conferences in the NCAA's digital media hub www.ncaa.veritone.com veritone is v-e-r-i-t-o-n-e -E. uh, transcripts are being provided by ASAP those will be posted shortly we will have Tennessee players next. That'll be at 3.05 today. Tennessee players at 3.05. Yeah. I believe so, but I'm not sure. It's not my job. I don't, out of my control. I control what I can control, and that's this. <laughs>
Like his heart probably, his heart probably went in his throat. Okay, we are about five minutes from having Tennessee players up here on the dais. And then after that, we'll have Coach Barnes. Uh, in the meantime, once again, satellite coordinates for these press conferences for today. Uh, Galaxy 17 slash K14 slot A. The downlink is 11966.5 vertical. Once again, satellite coordinates for today's press conferences, last two here. Galaxy 17 K14 slot A, downlink is 11966.5 vertical. In addition, following the, pro the press conferences, Hammond Communications is posting them in the NCAA's digital media hub. That is www.ncaa.veritone.com. Veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E. -E. And www.ncaa.veritone.com. Uh, ASAP is providing the transcripts. They're being posted shortly after each press conference. So you can get them as well.
like falling on the thing. It was. Yeah, but I didn't fall. That's the important thing. <laughs> Okay, the Tennessee players will be up here in just a minute or so. Uh, just a couple quick things. As a reminder, um, we ask that you please silence your cell phones uh, during the course of the press conference. Either put it on vibrate or turn it off. Uh, we will have a couple of microphone holders. Uh, so when you have a question, just raise your hand. We will get to you, get the microphone to you when you are called upon. Please give your name and affiliation before asking your question. If possible, ask your question for a specific player. Um, and then finally, if you are, please do not uh, record the press conferences with your cell phone or cameras. That is prohibited per NCA regulations. So, all right. We have senior guard Josiah Jordan James. We have senior forward Olivier Kamwa. And we have senior guard. Santiago Vescovic. We will take questions for any of the student athletes at this time. Once again, we do have the microphone, so just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you, and we will get started. All right, we'll start up here in front with Adam. Hey, guys. Adam Zagoria, New York Times. Welcome to New York. Um, for all of you, have you played at the Garden before? Is this your first time here? Anything really surprised you about the building? The other guys, FA, you guys said it was smaller than they thought. Um, you know, when you're walking around, you see the photos. Has anything kind of really stood out to you and just anything uh, special about playing here? Let's start with Santiago, then we'll go to Olivier, and then Josiah Jordan. Well, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, we have played before here one time, uh, if I'm not wrong. It was two? Well, we played two times. And? And uh, Maryland. Oh, Maryland, we play them here? I wasn't here. Oh, it was no, it was in Brooklyn. Yeah, we played here only one time against Texas Tech. Uh, definitely a game we don't want to go back to. Uh, it was an awful shooting night uh, for both teams. Uh, not a pretty game. Uh, but hopefully we're going to get a, a little bit better uh, for this game. Uh, like I said, we've been here, so we kind of knew what the building looked like. And it's definitely fun to be here again. Yeah, I also remember I was confused Maryland game. That was in Barclays. But uh, we definitely played here to, uh, last year. And it was a rough game. But hopefully, you know, we have better basketballs this time. So maybe it'll go a little smoother for everybody involved. Yeah, just to echo what they said, um, we, we, we played here against Texas Tech. A game that we we tried to forget about, but you know, just being here, being in Madison Square Garden, um, forget the basketball. I know there's a lot of great basketball players who come here, but you know, there's a, a lot of talented people who you know get to perform here night in and night out. It's just an honor to be be here and be on this stage. We'll be stay up here in front on the aisle. Go ahead, Josiah Teller Mansfield, Ravels.com. 
I guess, you know, being a leader of this team and getting to this point, you guys lose to Kai Ziegler and now you're back. Just Sweet 16 in New York City, what's it mean for you guys, you know, to rally around your team? You know, you guys go down. Some tough losses this year, too, but you guys just never quit. Yeah, we've just been resilient. That's what we talked about. That's what we knew it was going to come down to. We didn't, you know, expect the season to go how it did with the injuries and the guys in and out of the lineup and, you know, especially with Zakai being out for the rest of the season. But we just preach resiliency. It's one of our, our core foundations that we have as, as, as our culture. And, you know, we, we've just embodied it. And I, I give credit to our coaches. I give credit to my teammates um, because without them, we wouldn't be here. Without every last person in that locker room, we wouldn't be here. And we're just trying to soak up every moment that we, that we have here and, you know, you know, keep the season going. We'll stay on the aisle a couple rows back. Hi, Amanda Kristovich from Front Office Sports. Um, I think this question is for any or all of you. Obviously, one of, you're one of the few programs where your women's team is also in the Sweet 16. So I was wondering if you could describe your relationship with the women's players and how you've supported each other um, you know, over the last few weeks and the entire season. Let's start with Josiah Jordan, then we'll do Olivier, and then Santiago. The University of Tennessee, it's, a, it's an everything school. Um, we try to embody that. You know, there's a great culture, not only within our basketball program, but all of our programs. Um, we get a chance to go support uh, other student athletes from other sports, and we try our best to, and they, they do the same for us. The culture that we have at Tennessee is, is second to none. We all love each other. We all support each other, and it's just so easy because we have great teams doing great things. Um, and, but like I said, Tennessee is an everything school. We, we strive to be the best at everything. Uh, yeah, just to go off what he said, I think it's really cool to, you know, be one of the schools where two of our programs in basketball are, are in the NCAA tournament have made it as far as we have. And, you know, we see the girls every day, you know, we practice in the same facilities, so we see them around and we know how hard they work and we know how, how much they want to be in the position that they're in and, you know, we're hoping that they make a run and keep going. Uh. I think they said pretty much everything. But yeah, we're definitely uh, very happy for their team, uh, for anybody from Tennessee. Uh, like Joe said, we're in everything school. We really uh, take care of each other. Uh, we all root for each other. Uh, it's one big family. And I think uh, any of our UT's team uh, success is everybody's success. So uh, we're rooting for them. Uh, we're happy that we're here. And they're here uh, too in the Sweet 16. And let's just keep it going. I will stay on this side at the end, here in the th row three. Hi, Tom Canavan with the Associated Press. Josiah, I'll just ask you this. I mean, you talked about your school program. I mean, you look at the opponent you're playing. These guys are, most people had to look up where they were located. I mean, is there something, do you kind of take that as, you know, how do we handle that? Or, I mean, do you say, these guys won 33 games, they're good. Yeah, we, we respect each and every opponent, opponent that we play against. And we know that making it to March Madness, um, being one of the 64 teams selected, like you deserve to be there. So we're not overlooking anybody. And they've made it just as far as we have. So they have every right to you know think that they, they can beat us. And any team can be beaten on any given night. They have really talented players. They've only lost three games or so. I mean, it's going to be a really, really tough fight. Um, we're, we're definitely not overlooking any of their players um, or their coaches. We know that they're going to come prepared, and it's, it's not going to be easy. Now right, we're going to stay. We'll go here in the front row, and then we'll go on the aisle. So here in the front row, go ahead. Wes Rucker with CBS. Uh, for all three guys, unfortunately, uh, were there any times during the season with all the injuries and everything that you just – did you have to fight feelings of saying, this just isn't our year. Like nothing's working out the way we want. Nobody can get healthy at the same time. How tough was it to fight those vibes at all? Why don't we start with Santiago, then we'll go to Olivier, and then Josiah. No, we never thought that. I feel like that's how we all feel. What Santi said. <laughs> all right, we'll stay on the aisle on this side. Santi Taylor, Mansfield, Rivals .com. You know, this year, you know. A lot of guys have stepped up throughout the season. You know, it's a different night, different guy. Livier, last week, obviously, 27 points, you know, came out of really not anywhere because he's worked hard all season long. But seeing guys like him step up, helping you out, you know, the guy's not playing anymore. Just what's it mean to have more of a guy step up on an outlet basis? First of all, uh, being part of the team, you get to see a lot of things that people uh, don't see uh, from the outside. 
I'm not really surprised at all uh, when other guys step up, uh, Olivia, Josiah, uh, any guy on the team. Uh, we believe that when we're one of the best, if not the best, uh, the most hard worker team uh, in the country. Uh, I think uh, with that, like I see other guys put on the work that they put in. Uh, you don't get to see that anywhere else. Uh, and I think the guys deserve to be where we at right now. And I think the guys, uh, when they step up, it's just uh, it's showing how much work they put in uh, when the lights are off, uh, when nobody's around, when it's an empty gym. And that's just not easy uh, for anyone. Uh, but I think our guys uh, want this as bad as anybody else, and that's where we all put the work in. So uh, I think they're just, hmm? uh, so yeah, uh, I think it's just showing how much they work uh, when nobody else is looking. OK, we're going to stay on the aisle. We'll go to the other side here toward the back. Second to last row, go ahead. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. This is for any of you guys. Just Does Florida Atlantic remind you of anybody you <clears throat> faced this year, and if so, why? Let's start with Josiah, and then we'll go Olivier, and then Santiago. Um, they, they like to you know, get a lot of threes up and, and play at the rim. They don't really like playing in the mid-range area. Um, and one team that is like that in our conference is Alabama. Um, and so they, they, they like to play a similar play style on offense. And, uh, we have to go back and, and learn from you know what we did well against Alabama and, and hopefully apply it to this game. Olivier, Olivier anything? Yeah, we good. Did he get it? Yes, he got it. Okay. We'll go on to the next question if there is one. Yep, up here. All right, uh, Adeshina Quick, a lot of sports talk. First of all, congratulations to you guys uh, being here in New York. Uh, just wondering, uh, with uh, Santiago, with uh, being in Montevideo and Olivia and Helsinki, how does the cosmopolitan nature, and Euros Popchich as well, how does the cosmopolitan nature of this team uh, help in terms of its growth, in terms of its camaraderie, unity, uh, just being kind of a worldly uh, type of team? Let's start with Santiago and then Olivier. Can Olivia start, please? <laughs> Olivier, go first. I feel like it's big for any team to have a diverse group of individuals, you know, have having different kind of personalities in the locker room just, you know, it brings you closer, you know, you have to get to know each other more and you have to, well, honestly, we were lucky with the language barrier, all of us, by the time we had made it to this school, we all knew how to speak English, so that was, that was a big help for us, but just, you know, having different cultures to learn from and it's not just only the fact that we have some international guys, you know, we have guys from all, even all over the United States and just that in and of itself helps us to, you know, learn from each other and, and grow together. Santiago? Uh, I really love it. I love the whole team that we have. Uh, the guys international or from here from the States, uh, like I said, they're all over the place and it's just great. Uh, once it comes to the locker room, uh, you can never get bored. Uh, you always have something different going on. You have guys uh, with stories from all around the world. Uh, uh, I'm glad that language barrier is not a problem anymore. Uh, by the time we all got here, we all spoke uh, pretty good English. So uh, it's just fun. It's fun to have all uh, different types of guys, and I think that helps us uh, on and off the court. We'll take one more question if there are any. Okay, we'll come back down here. Yep. Tom Canavan with the AP again. Josiah, what's it like playing for a guy who's almost 70? <laughs> you would never know it um, just by the energy that he, he brings each and every day. I mean, there's sometimes when, when he gets to screaming and yelling and coaching us hard like he does um, where I just I, I'm worried about him. But, you know, he keeps coming. He keeps coming. He, he doesn't take any days off. It's really a blessing because he has so much knowledge, so many stories, and I just feel like every day is something – knew that he can talk about and he's been a great mentor a great teacher uh, for not only me but for the whole team I've learned so much we've learned so much from him it's, it's really been a blessing okay thanks fellas appreciate you taking the time thank you we will see you tomorrow thanks
that is correct. Yep. Perfect. So if I'm Ke Kevin Avenue, it's like, we have had him inspired, right? Literally. It's a different thing, right? It's a different, no, but, uh, Olivier and Oliver are very different. <laughs> okay, I'll make sure that's updated. Okay, thank you. We'll have Coach Barnes up here in just a couple of minutes. Ninety-four. It's the SID in me. I can't let go. Always. <laughs> coach, how you doing? Good. How are you? Mike Mahoney. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have Tennessee head coach Rick Barnes. Coach, welcome back to Madison Square Garden. We'll start with an opening statement from Coach, and then we'll open it up to questions. Please just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Just give name and affiliation before asking your question. But, Coach, do you want to start with an opening statement? Just really excited to be here. Obviously, I'm so proud of our players, and we are as a staff with all that they've gone through this year. And to be here is a really just a tremendous compliment to them and uh, excited to get ready to play again. We'll start up here in front with Adam. Hey, Rick, Adam Zagoria, New York Times. How you doing? Hey, Adam. Um, is this your first postseason game coaching in the Garden since 94, we were wondering? And just what's it like for you uh, and your players being here? Have they shared anything with you about – I mean, obviously you played here during the regular season. Um, any, any good stories or anything crazy about them playing here and their thoughts on it? You know, Adam, I, you know, we played here – was it a year ago, I think, or Texas Tech uh, here? But uh, I know this, uh, we all enjoy coming here. Uh, certainly the time that I spent up in Providence and growing up in North Carolina, I have great respect for this part of the country because I've always said that people here understand basketball at the highest level. And every year we do talk about how can we get to New York. And obviously we played in Brooklyn earlier this year uh, against Maryland. And, uh, but uh, coming a year ago, I think they know it's a special place. They, they certainly know what playing in the garden's about. And uh, certainly with Alan Houston being here and being a part of it, uh, I just, I, I know they're excited about being here. Is this, you think this is your first postseason game? I think it is. I, I think uh, last, I think the only time I was in postseason was during the Big East tournament back in the day, but uh, that's considered postseason. But, uh, yeah, I don't think we've been up here for an NCAA game. Stay on the same side, just a couple rows behind. 
Brandon Zunner, KWCH in Wichita. You spent a lot of time in the Big 12. I was just wondering if you ever formed any sort of relationship with Jerome Tang while he was at Baylor, and then uh, just from the outside, what you've made of what he's been able to do with that program in one year. Wow, in one year, I mean, what can you say other than he's been terrific? He's done a terrific job, and certainly uh, I think a great story is Keontae Johnson. You know, he was in the league, in our league, and had his – incident but uh for his comeback has been i think a great story for for college basketball but yeah i've known uh jerome and he's uh obviously had a big hand in what went on at baylor in terms of building that program and and uh he again from all that time certainly understands the big 12 and what it's about and how can you uh, again i mean it's, it's a tremendous job to have first year there which i think uh they were not picked to finish very high and for him to get him to this point is a really a, a great job by he and his staff. We'll go one row back on the aisle. Uh, Russ Steinberg from Boardroom. Uh, similar sort of question, but you're very familiar, of course, with Texas and with Rodney Terry. Just wondering what you think of the job that he's done given the circumstances that he had to inherit. Rodney's done a, a tremendous job. I, you know, Rodney was with me for a long time while I was there. and. I have the utmost respect for him, and, and you look at the situation, the way it unfolded, and for him to get the uh, respect. I mean, I know they respected him in the role that he was in as the associate head coach, but for him to slide over and the way he's handled it with an older group of guys, I'm not sure anyone else in the country could have done it any better. And uh, for them to be where they are is, a, again, another, another great uh, compliment to Rodney and his staff. And he would tell you that it's not just him, but – and the leadership that he's gotten there from the university as well. But uh, he's, he's done an outstanding job. We'll stay in the same row. We'll go the other side of the aisle. Hi, Amanda Kristovich from Front Office Sports. Obviously, um, you've made the Sweet 16, and the women's team has made the Sweet 16. What do you think it is about your department as a whole that has allowed for success in both basketball teams? Well, I, I think it really starts with our administration. Uh, it's in, in my eight years there, you know, we have had some change, but I've said before uh, with what we have with uh, Randy Boyd as uh, our president and Don Plowman, what she's done on campus has been phenomenal. Then Danny White has come in and, and has made as big an impact within a, what, two years of any one I've ever seen in terms of uh, the fact that he's done something to help every sport on that campus to, uh, because he, he's a very competitive athletic director. He wants us to be good in everything, but he and his staff, have uh, they've not just talked about it, they've done it. And uh, certainly I'm excited for Kelly. I think she's got one of those really difficult jobs, you know, because of the great tradition of our program. But she, I mean, she has done an incredible job because I was there before she was, and I saw when she came in that how quickly she wanted to build her culture, and uh, she's done it. And uh, they've had a tough year with the injuries, but uh, for them to be where they are right now, it's, uh, again, she and her staff have a lot to be commended for. Stay on this side of the aisle. Go back a row. Go ahead. Hey, Rick. Rocco Miller, Bracketseer.org. Um, question for you about Florida Atlantic, two parts. Uh, what did you know about them before the matchup came together, and what have you learned about them since? Well, they certainly catch your attention early in the year when they went to Florida and won at Florida, something that we didn't do. And uh, and I, anybody, any any program team that wins 33 games, I don't care what league you're in, because it's hard. All the all jobs are hard and difficult jobs, but for them to go through that, the first word that would come to my mind is consistency, because to do that day in and day out, knowing that they became the team that everybody was wanting to beat and and gear up for and. And you look at their team, uh, they're smart. They, they know each other well. They uh, great concepts on the offensive end, very sound defensively. And uh, they uh, should be a very highly confident team because, again, you win 33 games, it speaks volumes. But uh, and no doubt, all that they've done, they've earned it. We'll stay on this side in the front row. West Rucker, 24-7. Rick, I, I I believe I'm paraphrasing here, but I think you said maybe a week or two ago that you couldn't remember a season in your career that's gone quite the way this one has with injuries and, and things of that nature. How rare at this point in your career is it to come across something that you've never really come across before? And how did you kind of keep your spirits up and the team's spirits up through all that? Well, you know, really, 
you know, we often say that throughout a, a lifetime that, you know, I haven't seen anything like this, but this year in terms of the key injuries that we had and talking to Chad Newman, I asked him, I said, in your 28 years at, at Tennessee, have you gone through anything like this? And he said, not with key individuals at key times of the season. And what I would say is that I think these our players have a lot uh, that they should be proud about. And it's the fact that um, you felt it. I mean, I, I would be not honest with you if I, if I didn't tell you that you felt, me as a coach felt the tension that was going on, but yet wanting to make sure our guys believe that if we could go out and, and just keep doing what we do and trust in what we've done up to this point, that some way, somehow it would work out. And I think we all had to some way, somehow rely on our own personal faith and what we were doing to try to get through it because it was difficult. It, it really was. But, and, but, and I think we all had to figure out how to handle it in our own way. And, and, uh, but the fact is uh, I'm really proud of, and I've used the word, uh, these guys being resilient because they have been. And, you know, we thought going into the Arkansas game that we were going to be able to hit our stride at the right time. And then obviously early in the game, Zakai got hurt and we were playing at home and, and certainly rode that emotion to that win. At that point, we knew it was going to be a little bit different because Zakai was such a big part of our late game situations. And without him, we knew we'd have to find a way to work through that. And and uh, these guys have figured it out to a point to get them here. And, and uh, but as a coaching staff, we're just excited and know we're blessed to have a group of guys that have bought into each other and bought into what we've tried to do. We'll go across the aisle toward the back. Roger, just give your hand a quick raise. Go ahead. Hey, it's Roger Rubin from New York Newsday. Uh, Rick, it's about Zakai. Um, he's from the area. Um, it's a game with great magnitude in an iconic building in his area. Mm -hmm. And, you know, two of the other teams have New York area point guards going for him. You know, how impactful is missing him on your team and how much, you know, how, how tough is it that you feel for him, you know, given that he's not getting to participate in this thing that sort of holds so much for him? Well, we all feel for him because he's such a big part. I mean, he came in a year ago and, you know, the story is well documented that we spent a week recruiting him at the end of July and he made the commitment to come. He walked on campus five days late and the class has already started. And it didn't take but about two workouts. And we actually recruited him with the idea we thought we would redshirt him because we had Kennedy Chandler, who we knew was had his mind would probably be, he'd be a one and done player. But after a couple of days, we knew we couldn't redshirt him. And it, he, he brought a something within, within his DNA really impacted our team in a great way a year ago. And, uh, and I think he's one of those guys that when you play with him, you you have the mindset, you know, we've got this guy, we're going to be okay. And uh, he, uh, so for him not to, be, and, but he, he's still a part of this. I mean, uh, you know, he didn't travel with us last week because he went through surgery last week, but there's no way he wasn't going to come back here and be a part of it. But uh, you do feel for him because he, he understands the first question that was asked about the garden. He understands it more probably than anybody in that locker room. And, uh, but the fact is that um, his, his personality and who he is, I mean, he, he'll, he'll, he has an impact on his program and all, and it, his, it looms over the program. There's no question about that. And, but uh, we all wish that he were playing. There's no question about that. We'll stay on that side all the way in the back. Go ahead, yep. Coach Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. So you've had uh, one good game shooting from three, one not so good game shooting from three. The, the shooting in this tournament in general has not been very good. I know you only get a chance to see your team, but any reason why you think that 30% from three is, uh, is what's going on in this tournament? Well, I do think this. I, I think there is a great deal of emphasis placed on defense in college basketball now because I think we know that we're dealing with young people that were inconsistencies can be a part of it. We all we all work obviously, and we all would tell you that we need guys that can put the ball in the basket. And truth be told, if you ask every coach before any game if you have a concern, he would say, "I hope we can make a basket." You know, because the things, the other things, you feel you can't control with effort. You know. And if you're locked in, 
you know, with a game plan. But uh, sometimes you can run the exact play that you want, get the exact shot that you want, and it doesn't doesn't fall for you. And but I would have to say, most of all, if it's down, it's because of the defense, because it's hard to get baskets. I mean, you come down to court whether we're playing, you know, Louisiana the other night or Duke. Can we find a way to score here? Can we can we shake loose and, and, and get a good look? And if you do get it, oftentimes I think players are surprised that they've got such a good look. And uh, but then you have, we're playing a team right now that I think they can lock and load that thing as quick as anybody that we've played all year. And knowing that uh, anybody that you play is capable of having one of those nights. And uh, I hope we can break our trend and keep shooting it the way that uh, I, I think we can. You know, I think we're a good shooting team. And uh, But uh, I, I do think defense probably has as much to do with it as, as anything. We'll move up one row, the young man right there. Yep, go ahead. Hi, Coach Killian Johnson, Sports Illustrated Kids Reporter. Um, with uh, Zakai Ziegler out, how has Santiago stepped up and succeeded in both playing and creating team chemistry? Well, what he's done, he, he's a very versatile player. You know, he impacts winning without ever scoring a basket. Uh, he is a guy that has played uh, point before, you know, four years ago when we were going through really through a, a, a transition or a program. He and Josiah James, as freshmen, had to play the point in ways, and I, they certainly weren't ready to do it at that point in time, but they had to. They had to figure, figure that out. Santi is great with moving without the ball, and uh, he's great at uh, – and I've said before, I don't know if anybody's been guarded any harder than he has been guarded all year long. I mean, people literally won't leave him, and uh, he's learned how to uh, – he's a very smart player. He knows how to set back screens and get his teammates open. He's thinking the game. But what he's done as much as anything is what he's impacted the game on the defensive end. He went from a guy early in his career that people literally went after every game to where now he's you know been on the all-defensive team and does what he does because he uh, he understands the game and he understands how to impact winning. We got time for one more question. We're going to come across the room on this side to, in, front, in front of me in row three. Go ahead. Yeah, you. <laughs> Rick Tom Canavan with the AP. Does age play into coaching anymore? Jim Beheim coached till he was 78. Patino just got the St. John's job at 70. You're pushing something. And I mean, is age not a difference anymore? That, that's a great question. You know, I, I, think, I think we all know when we've had enough. You know, like people ask me oftentimes uh, what goes through your mind, and I think if I ever got to the point where I didn't look forward to going to practice, and you know, I have great, great respect for Jim Bay. I might got to spend some time with him this summer, and he. I mean, when I was with him, I thought if he wanted to, he could coach five more years because he's out recruiting. He's doing what he needed to be, what we have to do at certain times of the year. I think it gets back to individual personalities and how you feel and and, and where you think you are with it. And uh, I'm not surprised about. Uh, Coach Patino, I mean, he, he loves coaching basketball. And I think guys that stay in it for a long time, I think it's, it's the love of the game. I think they enjoy it. And uh, I've said often the best job in America is when you can get up every day with young people that have great dreams and, are, and you want to help them work towards those goals and they're willing to buy into the things that you need to do that you can help them with. And, uh, but I don't know if I would say uh, – I don't think you could put age on it. I think it gets back to individual personalities and where they are at that point in time in their career and in their life in terms of, um, you know, what they see themselves doing. And I would say this, a lot of coaches that I know that quit early made the comment they wish they would have stayed with it. Because I think at one time everybody thought there was, a, and there is a shelf life for everybody, but I think people thought that when you got to your mid-60s it was time to be finished. And like I said, some people that did do that, you know, they've said they wish they would have kept going. Okay, Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. All right, thank you, guys.
These are these are nicer than last year's. I like I kind of like the two tone, yeah. two tone back. Great job today. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, that worked out well. We're on the Okay. We'll get it rolling.